Hello, hello everyone. My name is Laura. This is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which are my top 10 reads of 2023. So, it's been a while since I've made and posted a video, but I do want to just say first off that I do have videos in the works, including setting up my new book room, my new home office library thing. Um, so just stay tuned and subscribe so that you don't miss when these videos do go up. I do hope to get back to a regularly posting schedule, hopefully soonish. I'm aiming for one video a week here. So let's get started with this one, the top 10 books of 2023. So I'm going to start with the book in the number 10 slot and work my way up to the best book of 2023 and I personally cannot believe how long it took me to read what ended up being my best book but also there are so many good books on this list I I loved all of these these are all rated five stars and there are so many other good books that I read this year that either just didn't make the list or almost made the list but I digress let's move on so in the number 10 slot I have Rise of the Snake Goddess. This is by Jenny Elder Moak. This is the second book in the Samantha Knox series and it is the most recent one that is out and it follows Greek mythology and like I said it's the second book so if you want a better introduction for the characters read the first one Curse of the Spectre Queen but I was not super thrilled with it. This one however was so much better. I was so happy that this book ended up being so much better than the first one. It gave me a lot more faith in this author in this series and I just think that the more she writes the better they'll get and so I'm really excited for the next one but this is very like 1920s Indiana Jones female main character-esque and yeah I love it. There's there's travel, there's linguistics that take place into this and if you know me you know I'm a big fan of linguistics and languages and things like that. So this book was definitely made for me and it was just so good, highly recommend. In the number nine slot, we have A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. This is peak dark academia right here. I've got quite a few dark academia on this list, but A Study in Drowning was just so unique and it was very dark, but not in like a gruesome trigger warning kind of way. I mean, there are a couple of triggers of hints to like sexual assault and things like that so just be warned this just had the dark and stormy vibes it is about our main character who is an architecture student but wishes she was a literature student but no females are allowed in the literature college so she just goes to the architecture college and she's like one of the first females to be in the architecture program and she wins this project to go to her favorite author who has recently deceased his house and to redesign it and so she goes off into this stormy island and there's academic rivals and all all kinds of things like that so I thought this was really good such great vibes such unique like academic with a twist I'd say because she's not at school for most of the book but it is still very academically focused coming in at number eight I I don't know if it'll be a surprise for people but that would be Iron Flame um so yeah, this is a chonker and it's beautiful. I actually really like the book. I know a lot of people are like, they loved it, it was just as good as Fourth Wing or they hated it and Fourth Wing was so much better. Personally, I loved it and I cannot wait to see what happens next. The cliffhangers, I won't say too much about Iron Flame because I don't want to spoil it if you haven't read Iron Flame or Fourth Wing yet either, but you know, badass Dragon College continued. So number seven, I don't actually own. It's kind of funny because it's the one book in the trilogy that I don't own, so I'm going to hold up the first one. Uh, but number seven is Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco. So this is the first book, Kingdom of the Wicked. I do also have Kingdom of the Feared, which is the third one. I just don't have the second one because I want to give it in, I want to get it in hardback. And I just, I, it's not in my Barnes and Noble as hardback anymore, so I have to like either look elsewhere or go online and I just haven't done that yet but Kingdom of the Cursed was my favorite of this trilogy the spice level definitely kicked up a notch but you still had like 
the goodness of the plot and the characters as well as that increased spice level so for me it was my favorite of that trilogy but the whole trilogy was really good these books were 4.5 stars but kingdom of the curse was five out of five stars for sure in the number six slot was legends and lattes by travis baldry this got everybody on their cozy fantasy kick and i am included in that I absolutely loved it. It really is cozy fantasy in every sense of the word of the genre. You have your warrior who just is done with adventuring. She found this weird thing called lattes and coffee from the gnomes and so she decides to open up her own little coffee shop and it's very like low stakes with the plot. You know like it's fantasy, it's cozy Cozy meaning it's not super high stakes and it's just a perfect little sit down with a cup of preferably a latte or you know tea, hot chocolate, whatever it is you prefer. I just got an espresso machine for Christmas slash I got it for my partner and I and so I seriously want to reread this with a latte in my hands for sure. So, so comfy, so cozy. I love the characters, their relationships, their dynamics and I love like all the reactions of all these different people from basically a D&D esque world <laughs> um, experiencing coffee for the first time or experiencing lattes. It's great. It's great. It's, it's just great. Number five is actually another romance, which I have increased reading my romance so much this year. And I actually, this is the second book of like a companion. I think there are only two books out right now. And I read them the second one and then the first one and that was just fine anyway so in number five is practice makes perfect by sarah adams this is the author who wrote when in rome um and that was written first but this one oh, grumpy sunshine opposites attract oh so good she is the younger sister and she owns a floral shop and so she's very like that light floral happy but you know she's always kind of discounted because she is the youngest sister you know they all kind of put her in this goody two-shoes box and she is sick and tired of being in that goody two-shoes box and then you've got this bodyguard right here who is tatted up and who is dark and badass and all those things they they like know each other previously but then they start like a fake relationship that doesn't end up being so fake because she wants to change the image of being this perfect goody two shoes little sister and he has a massive crush on her and is in town. So I just loved it. I was glued to this. I could not put it down. I read it physically. And for me to read something physically and not be able to put it down right now means a lot just because I don't have a lot of time for physical reading right now. But the fact that this was literally glued to my hands for like the couple of days it took me to read this. Oof, oof, oof. It just had all my favorite tropes. It was great. It was great. In slot number four, we have a book that I just very recently read. It was recommended to me by a friend um, because I love dark academia, but also like languages and language based academia. And this is definitely like a trigger warning horror thriller dark academia language based book and in slot number four is the center and this is by Aisha Manazir Siddiqui and oh my gosh I still think about this book like I know I read it like a couple weeks ago month ago I am still thinking about this book it is like this woman is a translator with Urdu and English and she's really just doing like Bollywood subtitles, which is great. She's working in her field like she wants to be a translator But she wants something more than just subtitles for Bollywood films and stuff like that and so she Goes out with this guy and he seems to just be perfect in every language that he learns and he's learned a lot of languages and she you know is interested in learning more languages in order to expand her translation capabilities and so he tells her of this secret school that you can get into, that spending two weeks there, no social media, no contact with the outside world, you have to follow a very strict regimen of like when you eat, what you eat, when you sleep, how much you sleep, the listening to lessons, everything like that is so strict, but you become perfectly fluent by the end of it. 
And so she goes. And she learns a little bit more than probably what she wanted to at the school for how they teach languages perfectly. Oh, I just love this so much. Like, I'm so conflicted about it though, wishing it were real, but also not because it's horror and it's horror for a reason. So obviously I don't want it to be real, but man, if I could go somewhere and learn a language fluently in two weeks, I would learn every single language there is in the world. So this was in slot number four. And in slot number three is technically a book that is the first book that I mentioned earlier. <laughs> Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I can't have Iron Flame on here and not have Fourth Wing on here. They both came out this year and I obviously read them both. I just love this one so much more. I just did, okay? I am always someone who loves the first book most in series and trilogies, most of the time, not every time, Carrie Maniscalco, but most of the time I always love the first book more because that is the introduction to the world. That is the introduction to the magic system, the world building, the characters. And that to me is the most magical time and this is definitely that like there was so much happening like when i look back and think of the book it did not feel slow at all but there was a lot happening and it took quite a bit for things to happen but i was entranced every step of the way it just had me hooked like if you get it you get it if you don't what a bummer what a bummer for you because this was the number three book of the year for me personally. In that number two slot was a book I knew I was gonna love. I just didn't know how much. I was worried it was gonna be overhyped, but in my opinion, it was not overhyped. And that is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Foggett. Fawcett? That's a C. I'm gonna go with that's a C and say it's Fawcett. Um, also, just look at this book. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it just absolutely gorgeous? Okay, but that's not why it's in the number two slot. It certainly helps, but that is not why. This is such a cozy, like, it gives me spring vibes, even though it happens kind of like early winter. You have Emily Wilde, who is an academic professor, and this is like historical. It gives me 1800s vibes, and, or like early 1900s, and she's a professor, and she is writing the first ever encyclopedia of all Fae. And this is Fae of like little pixies, magical gnome creatures to the high Fae courts and everything in between. Everything that is considered Fae. If you are a fan of mythology like me, any Fae that you're aware of from mythology, mostly like Irish mythology, it's all in here. Changelings, everything. It's Fae. And she's cataloging it all and so she goes to this new place like this very like Sweden-ish place where it's it's cold and kind of remote nobody really goes there to research some of the lesser known fairies and fae there to add them to her encyclopedia because if they know exists it should be in her encyclopedia and uh, there's a little bit of academic rivalry it's very I hesitate to say cozy fantasy but like it's got the same stakes as a cozy fantasy where it's like it's not super high stakes but it is enchanting and it is beautiful and lyrical and encouraging and just oh i i absolutely adored it the second book is coming out early next year i will have it included on my anticipated releases for the first quarter of next year which will be a video i will get to soon so stay tuned for that i'm telling you um, but this was definitely the number two slot. I just could not put it down. I was lying on my floor reading it all day long on my day off because there was nothing else I was going to do. Once I started this, it was this and only this. Now the final book, the final book in my top 10 list, the number one book of this year. I, it came out a couple years ago and it's been on my radar ever since it came out and it was huge. It blew up when it came out. I just, I was so afraid to read it because I didn't want it to like not live up to the hype or me not love it as much, but I finally read it earlier this year. And not only is this my favorite book of 2023, it is my favorite book of all time, which I have never had and normally do not ever claim. But this book truly is my favorite book of all time thus far. I took off the dust jacket too. Um, because I was traveling with it and I don't actually know where the dust jacket ended up. So, 
my favorite book of all time, Babel by R.F. Quam. Again, it's a very fitting book for my personality. Like, if you know me, it makes perfect sense. And even with like watching this video earlier talking about like dark academia and languages, this romanticizes everything I want in my future career. Yeah. So I am a polyglot. I'm someone who speaks multiple languages. And if actually you're interested in that, I do have a second YouTube channel called Languages with Laura, where I talk about like being a polyglot, but I also talk about all my travels and all kinds of things like that. So if you're interested, check out Languages with Laura. But this, so I'm a translation student as well as an English student. And there were lectures in here that like resonated with me as something that my professors would talk about, but it was just so it was put down much more artistically like it's a book it's meant to get its point across but in a beautiful way which is something my professors may not necessarily pay all that much attention to because they're just trying to teach but this book it just it demonstrates the beauty of language and it has the magic of language literally the literal magic of translation is actual magic in here to me it's magical but in this book it's physical literal magic and it brings me so much joy while at the same time it is historical and it does have a lot of uh, trigger warnings for like racism and also just the history of like racist translations kind of like in a way I don't really know how to describe it but you know you've got this boy who was adopted from China so that he could translate between Mandarin and English and a couple of other languages. And so he is going to this secret extra, or not secret, but this extra school in Oxford for translation and silver work, which that's kind of how the magic system works. If you want to know, just read the book because I'm not going to be able to explain it. But my favorite book of all time and of 2023 is Babel by R.F. Kuang. So if you have not read it yet and any of that sounds interesting to you or you just want to read down with the good, it is a little chunky, but I read it really quickly. <laughs> so do not be intimidated. It is my favorite book. Please pick this up if you haven't already. So those are all of my top 10 books of 2023. It was a pretty good reading year, I'll say. I have, it was, it was a much more balanced, but like I feel happy about all the reading I've done this year. Like I said, a lot of really good books, quite a few not so great books, but I feel like they were just balanced out. So yes, thank you all very much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below what some of your favorite books from this past year was, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see when I post new videos, hopefully once a week soon just kind of depends but that is going to be my goal but just make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when those videos do go up but until I see you all in the next video I wish you happy reading